This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 422, recorded on November 14th, 2019. Here in Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here. And Mike, it was fall for like three days, and then winter, and now fall seems to be back. So I think we're in that weird phase. Rich is in Florida. He doesn't hit summer all year it long got down in to Florida. 38 degrees the other day. <laughs> well, that's Did you, too low. Did you cover the orange trees? I don't have orange trees. No, okay. <laughs> I always just know that it's a big deal, right? In Florida, but down when... there they 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 spray them with water and set the flames. They burn the butane <laughs> burners to keep the heat up. I'm not yeah, kidding you. They do. They no, I know. Douse them in water and then set these it's a big gas deal. heaters off. Hmm. It's a, it's a big deal. Here we just turn on the deck heaters and smoke cigars. That's right. what we do here in Nebraska, right, Mike? Yes. When you're not out hunting, how was hunting? We missed you at some point because you were you were doing some stuff but how was hunting last weekend you went out and set up a blind and did we, some stuff? well we set up the blind hunting opens okay. rifle season opens uh saturday and so i i might be able to get down sunday this weekend but next weekend it's one week you get one week for rifle so you really got to get down there so we're gonna get down to the farm hopefully sunday and then next weekend as well and uh yeah so i am like amped up it's all i've been thinking about because uh, you set up the blind yeah. and then you gotta wait yeah. a week to even use it you uh, you taking ham a ham radio out there at all? To, yeah, okay. I am. I'm taking a set of set of ham radios, um, just to communicate back and forth. We got a few people going with us, and sometimes you know cell service. My buddy's got Sprint, and there's no Sprint down at the farm where it's at, yeah. so the radios will be the yeah. way we'll communicate. Rich, have you gotten into ham radio, or were you ever I, at any point? You know, I was uh, when I was in the Navy. One of my assignments, one of my extra collateral duties, was I was the Mars operator. So the Mars Mars was a system. Uh, kind of ham radio-ish, right? We could, I could tune up a, a transmitter and receiver in Radio Shack, and I would make calls. So we had this guy in Virginia Beach who we'd always connect with late at night when we were in the med. And uh, so he, what we would do is he would patch the calls to a local phone number from his gear where he sat. And then the guy, I could patch the phone calls on the ship down to the mess decks. And there was a phone on the mess deck, so the guys would sit down. I'd know they'd tell me who was down there, give me the info they were looking for. We'd patch the call, and then they would be able to have the conversation. It was manual though, so the the guy on the other end and I had to monitor, right, to push the transmit button, and they, people had to say over in order yeah. to uh, release the button. So it was kind of a normal conversation, but but it was pretty fun. You got that guy. Yeah. We ended up giving a really after our our med cruise in 1990. We ended up getting him a really nice ship's plaque and, and nice. hooking him up with some nice gear for taking nice. care of us through the deployment. Yeah, that was um, in those days, too. We were just starting to get some satellite stuff. Yeah. That yeah. satellite communication, I got deployed. This would have been for first Gulf War. So early, ni so 90, I think yep, we got deployed right down frame. to the yep. National Training Center. And at one point, we, so so we that were ramped up at the end of 90. We were finishing up yeah. our deployment. Yeah, August of 90, I think I want to yeah, say, or right. something like that's that. Right. Yeah, something that's I think is when Saddam went in. And um, we went to a center. We were at the National Training Center in Fort Irwin, and they brought us in this big room. And I can only imagine how expensive. Like today, we do all that stuff right. over the internet for nothing. Right. But in those days, uh, I can only imagine it was pure satellite, a delay, maybe a two yeah. or three second delay, right? Yeah, I, being in the Mars those... operator, though, you always got to call home because you operated the gear. Mm -hmm. So I was able to call home about yeah. once a week. Now, my last deployment, no, so that was 90. 17 years later, on my final med cruise deployment, I had a phone on my desk I could pick up and dial home mm -hmm. yeah. without well, having to ask anybody permission. In in '03, so my my nephew was an army in, uh, uh, tech engineer guy, and he went in and set up networks for mm -hmm. you know they would deploy, and he would set up a, a network for a platoon or for a company that was in, and so they would get satellite internet access up, probably some of the first thing, and I could call him. And we did mostly messaging, but yeah. he was in Iraq and they were doing, you know, they were doing what they were doing in 2003 in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And although that was not quite yet, but they um, so I talked to him more when he was deployed in the Middle East than I did when he was here in the United States because he was in a, you know, he was in a he was in a talk somewhere. Right trying to get things up and running and, or, or they had it up and running and he was the overnight guy. And so it's just very, very interesting to go 
you know, from, from 90 satellite yep. communication only. And shoot, when I was in, when I was in Germany in the eighties, the late eighties, 86, 87, 88, 89, a phone was all you had. And it was, yeah. a, it was a buck a minute, right? We went from oh, that to expensive. 2003 doing ICQ or, you yep. know, instant messaging. You know, I talked you know. to my brother and he was in downtown Baghdad because he just made that run in with the third armored division. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was aboard the LaSalle at sea and we spoke to each other once he got settled in Baghdad. Yeah. Yeah. The other it was, phone. Just it was, crazy. it was in uh, an IP in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so it was just crazy to me how we had gone, how far in a decade we had gone, um, of course, with technology. So, well, let me remind everyone, of course, you can listen to the show on our app. Speaking of easy ways to do things, it's, sometimes it's hard to find. Maybe you don't have a podcast app or maybe you just want to listen on the road and you want to have a stream. You don't want to find it. Streaming is sometimes a hard thing to do uh, when you're doing that. The app does it like in two button pushes. So HomeGadgetGeeks.com, download the app. Android, iPhone, either way, gets you in there. It's free. We want to thank our Patreon subscribers for that. Easy way to do it. Join us on Discord, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. Facebook, theaverageguy.tv slash Facebook. Rich Hay is with us tonight. Rich, it's been a while since we've seen you. Not yeah. that long, but welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, you've been you've been staying busy on the Microsoft side. Um, there's I been have, a lot yeah. of things going on, and um, you're back from Ignite. You've you went to the Surface event. We're going to talk about both of those. Let me, let's start by this though. Last night, I think it was last night. I started checking my computers here. Uh, 1909, Indeed. it was ready to go. Tuesday. And yep. so there was about, there was a cumulative update. There was a, the malware tool update and there was a .NET update. Yep. Those things took 15, 20 minutes, let's just say, to get those done. Just to go through the whole process. That's check, download, install, reboot, yeah. and be ready 20, to go. 20, 25 minutes for those. And then 1909 was there, and I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be another 30 minutes. No. Nope. Five. Five. Yeah. Five if, if you read the, the, the blog post they put out this week, so something about 1909. So normally we've always seen these great big feature updates, right? Three to four gigabytes, depending, and that's what came down to your system, and that would take a really long time. With 1909, it's basically a, a cumulative update to 1903 that was released earlier this year. The interesting part is, though, they actually dropped the bits for 1909 on consumer devices last month. Mm. They were sitting there dormant, waiting, and then this month, that update that popped for 1909 was simply an enablement package that flipped the switch and turned it all on okay. and gave you the reboot. Now, we the big question will be this is the first time microsoft's done a major feature update in the spring and a small kind of cumulative update in the fall we don't know how that's going to continue right we don't know if that's going to be the cycle i think we all believe that that would be the case but if rumors are true there are some rumors out there that we're going to see 20h1 in december or or, or it'll hmm. finalize and then we'll see it in early in the year right and then uh, what would be the next one would be 20h Two, two, which we're not seeing, we don't see any builds of right now that we would see sometime later because they just sh they just moved Windows to a an Azure update cycle to mm -hmm. to get in sync with the Azure team. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to kind of watch what happens. Yeah. And do you have any reservations uh, on this? I mean, the last three have been kind of not not necessarily great. Well, no, and I think 1909 is going to do okay. It was it was waiting for me on I, I mean I was on it on most devices, but I the Surface laptop because it was new, I just left on 1903 and because I knew it was going to pop. Um but uh cumulative updates are always lower risk than a full-blown feature update, right? Mm -hmm. That's got to do a major migration of your because what pe I don't know if people understand when you install a feature update with Microsoft with Windows 10, it's basically migrating all your data away from the current install, installing the update and then migrating that data back and putting everything back in place including your apps, your programs, your settings, everything. So it does a pretty significant amount of stuff in that time frame. Part of the reason why it takes so long. Um, with a cumulative update, everything's in place, really. It's just a, a few small bits that get updated to push you over to 1909. And it did get a little handful of updates, but nothing crazy major or anything like that. I haven't heard of any issues, but I haven't checked the update history page lately to see if there's any blocks. I wouldn't got, expect them. I've got uh, 20H1 in the fast ring running yep. on my Surface Pro 3. Um, That's now in the slow ring. They released that to the slow they, ring. They did. So uh, slow and fast are the same thing, right, at this uh, point? Not the same build. Okay. It's a build behind. So okay. but slow just got 19.013. On the same day that happened, later that day, they released 19.01. Oh, no. Yeah, 19.023. 
came out for fast rain. You keeping up with this Uyghur? Are you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> all of it. Do you care, Mike? Um, do, I, are you tracking at all any of the Windows builds and anything you're doing? Well, you know, I used to a, a ton, especially when I was running. Um, you know, because I had this Mac dual booted, and I would use Windows for a lot when I was live streaming, things like that. It really was a daily driver for me. The only Windows box I have running 24-7 now besides special uses is my Sighthound box that I use for video surveillance. Uh, just a little box sitting over there in the rack. So I've kind of fallen out of, of needing to be in the know of when these releases are coming out, what they're going to do, should I be upgrading, should I not. Uh, it just it hasn't been as much of a thing for me since I got out of using the Windows side of this machine every day. Uh, Rich, I get this feeling that for most update folks, those who watch, it's going to get really boring for the next six months. I like, think it, so too. Don't, don't you think? We've just kind of stable. 20, think about it. We've been testing 20H1 since like the beginning of this year. They yeah. put it in skip ahead and kind of freaked everybody out that they did that, right? Because it was out of sequence. So we've had, I forget the count, but we're up over 35 builds, I think, for 20H1 in the course of the last 11 months. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly getting extensive testing. Um, you know, I, I think I have bigger concerns around the Insider program and the testing and stuff like that because the claim is 16 million Insiders. I don't think there's even close to that testing Insider builds. You know, yeah. I, I just... Yeah. No, like me, I have it on. I'm not actively testing. Right. I mean, it's there. They're getting telemetry from me. They're getting whatever. I run some stuff on it, but you can see it right, right behind my right shoulder here. It's there. I'm, you know, I run some stuff, and I don't say I wouldn't say actively testing. There hasn't right. been a lot to actively test. Just no, to be it's honest, not, it's kind of I, yeah. I, We've settled into a routine, I guess, three and a half years after the initial release of Windows mm -hmm. 10, and I think maybe it's just lost some of that. Well, as around having early access and stuff. Yeah. Well, here's what I think, right? They tried to be fast and we had three disastrous builds uh, or three disastrous upgrades, yeah. right? With that. And yeah, we had insiders and it was exciting to be an insider and you're getting new stuff all the time and there was stuff to test. And then they're kind of like, maybe we ought to back this stuff down a little bit. Like, nah. and well, that's not as exciting for insiders. And I think after yeah. a while, you kind of, I mean, the insider, the 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 uh, the hub used to have challenges and points, and I'm not saying those aren't there anymore. It's just they don't refresh very much because there's just not a lot of activity. Now, that being said, there's been, I think, a ton of fit and finish under the hood as they're, you know, doing some things because they just right. took it on the chin, right? Well, especially with the cumulative update. That's a great right. chance to work on that under the hood stuff. Yeah. No, I just think they've, they've spent some time kind of making some things stable. But stable is boring. Like yeah. if you're, if you're, so it really, you're really battling two different worlds, right? You have a bunch of enthusiasts who are like, throw crap at us so we can complain about it. Right. And then, <laughs> yeah, right. Then you have the rest of the world who's like, could you just stop changing things? Right. right. That's and your I, enterprise. Yeah. Those are your enterprise customers. They don't like that change. They don't like the shuffle. Uh, it's one of the reasons why Microsoft made the fall update good for 30 months for enterprise, the Windows 10 enterprise edition in education. Uh, we know us consumers still have an 18 month window, but you got to give them credit, right? With 1903 was the first time they introduced some more controls at the user level, right? Now updates just don't automatically show up when you hit send and receive or send and receive windows update. They now pop up in a little box underneath and says it's here. If you want it, you can ignore it. Driver updates are going into a separate section of windows update. So you can choose to install those things. You don't have to install what windows update thinks you need. So they're, they're giving back a little bit of that control to the end user, especially the enthusiast end user. Yeah, Ken, Ken asked this question. Let me let me bring it up here since I can do that. Oh, uh, no, it hasn't hit it. Yeah, any, uh, no, not that one yet. Ken, it'll hit a second. He basically says, uh, what about advice for anyone um, still any free on, ones? You mean Windows 10? Well, no, I'm. Let me, his question goes back to, oh, here it is right here. Can we cover upgrade options for those still stacked and who runs uh, who runs Windows 7? So who slacked? Sorry, who slacked? In other words, Rich, you're on Windows mm -hmm. 7 right now. I, no, you're I not. No, I'm not. But, no, but just say you are. <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. January 14th. Yep, January 14th, 2020 Patch goes away. Day. Are there options? There actually are. Some, there, it, Ed Bott writes, has a post, a blog thing that he keeps up to date. And right now, you can still use a Windows 7 key to activate Windows 10 on a device. So if you have a Windows 7 key, a retail key laying around, 
if you have a device that was installed with Windows 7, it's got the sticker on the bottom, right? The, the old certificate of authenticity. Um, most of those are still working. Uh, even if you have Windows 7 on a device that the, the serial key is locked in the BIOS, they are still working. It, micro, it's never shut off. Nobody, you know, it, it's kind of that, um, it's kind of the elephant in the room for the upgrade, right? It's there. Nobody, Everybody knows it's there, but nobody's doing anything about it to stop it. And I think that it, whether that's intentional or not, I don't know. It's good but service. Yes, I think it, it was the right thing to do. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Leave it there and available. Yeah. And it, it's the one last way to do it. So, yeah, I, I believe it's still working last I checked Ed's update on that. It would require a fresh install of Windows 10, though, right, to make this happen? You can't I do an in-place I do not upgrade. believe you can do Windows 7 direct to Windows 10 anymore. I, I think that was possible in those early in the the initial release of Windows 10, but I'd have to go look to be 100% sure. Joe, Joe is saying in-place upgrade still works. Oh, so there you go. So Down, that's perfect. Download and run the media creation Down, tool. give you the That's the, the best way to do it if you're on okay. Windows 7. Go to the website, create your the media creation tool page. You don't have to create media. You can, or you can just download and do an in-place upgrade right from that page. Yeah. So I, I think those are the – Joe also says still works with 1909 tool as well. Um, I think those are your options. Now, that takes away, I think, a lot. The only reason listeners to this show are still on Windows 7 is because they're using Media Center. <laughs> Let's just be, I mean, that's going to be most, that's me still. I mean, we're, we're in that boat as well. I'm not, you know, and you can't, you can upgrade to 8 to keep Media Center if you got the right pack. Although it's got a little bit more life left on it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, I, you know, so, um, you know, for most folks to make that jump to 10, they're kind of hosed at this point. Mike and I, by the way, if you're a regular listener and you had, you missed last week, Mike and I talked a bunch about that, about some of what I'm doing to counteract that through Plex and through an NVIDIA Shield. So you can go back and kind of listen to that as well. Rich, you also spent some time at the Surface Pro event, and Mike and I, I talked about that briefly right afterwards. But give us your kind of brief synopsis. What was it like? What did you see? You picked up some hardware. Let's talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so I attended, So I had two invites to this event. I had my normal media invite that I always get, but I also got invited as a Surface fan. They're trying to revive this kind of enthusiast uh, environment around the hardware. Um, so they invited us. So I opted to go with the Surface Fan approach because the email revealed that it was going to be a pretty good deal. And in fact, it was. Uh, the, so they, they put us up in a hotel. We had a reception upstairs with uh, Yusuf Mehdi, some other Microsoft folks, uh, the two football players that do the cupcakes. Right? You've seen the commercials for Surface oh, yeah. with the two football players. They were there. They were awesome. They had cupcakes everywhere to eat. Um, and, you know, and so as we left that night um, the, to head to our rooms, they handed us a set of Surface headphones. Hmm. They're awesome. Okay. Uh, Surface fans. That, the, that's my the mandatory can. hashtag. That's the cans. Yeah. The can version, right? That's the, uh, yeah, it's not the buds. They did announce the buds um, at right. that event. But they're, uh, I almost wore these tonight, but I decided <laughs> not to. But um, they're awesome. I mean, I tried them out when they were launched, and they were superb, and I, they're just awesome to use. And flying home with them and all that kind of stuff. I took a cab from Manhattan to JFK, and I wore them the whole way, and just all that road noise was gone. They're really solid for noise cancellation. They may not beat out Bose or Sony or somebody like that, but they're good. And there's adjustments on the can for how much of the outside environment comes in. You can actually turn that off or maximize the, mm -hmm. the noise cancel. So we did that the I night before. I do like that dial. I, oh, yeah, I, I do too. I like it. Um, so that was the night before. Uh, and then the morning of, we had a breakfast down in the, the downstairs of the the, um, the hotel. And Panos came in and talked to us for about five or six minutes just to kind of brief us on what was going to happen and, and where he was going with things and prepared and thanked us for being there. And then they took us to the venue. Uh, actually, the bus got lost on the way to the venue. We had to loop <laughs> like two city blocks in Manhattan in rush hour. Which is like two hours. That's like crazy. So so you might have remember reading some complaints from some of the folks that were there as media about it was a really small venue, right? It was this really long venue when you were in there. You didn't see it because you were looking at the stage on the live stream. But it was this really long, skinny venue and very short depth from the stage to the back right so they brought all us in and there were a bunch of reserve seats already for microsoft execs and stuff like that um in fact i had joe belfiore sitting right back off my right shoulder and uh 
Frank Shaw, the big the com vice president, was there, former Marine. And then I had Yusuf Mehdi that was there, and, and of course Ralph Grone was there from the surface team. Turns out he was holding the, the duo in his uh, bag the whole time during the, the event. But anyway, so we were there to be enthusiasts. And so there was a couple very, uh, we were labeled idiots by one journalist. Uh, yeah, the idiots that were some to that effect. But we were there to clap and make noise, and we did. Uh, well, yeah, I think I did a little bit. But <laughs> but it was still a fun event. So we had great seats, right? We were there in the midst of things, watching them go through that process. So it was pretty straightforward, right? Most of that stuff leaked. Surface Laptop 3, Surface Pro 7. Uh, I even think the Pro X stuff had leaked, right? We kind of knew about that ahead of time. So that was your main hardware. So Surface Pro 7, Surface Laptop 3, uh, the earbuds, right? The the earbuds that they announced. Yeah. And uh, and they they announced some other little peripheral stuff. And then they Surface Pro X. And then that was what led into Panos uh, announcing the Surface Duo and then Surface Neo. Um, and, and those were just, I mean... Those were cool. I, you couldn't get near them at the event because they had them in this little, like, roped off. It wasn't really roped off, but Yusuf Mehdi was on a little, this boxing ring kind of set up. And you had to be scheduled with an appointment, and then you would get it to go up in there and talk about them and get some time to take pictures. I don't remember seeing anybody handle them, though. So, um, and, uh, but, but, so... It, so as a Surface fan, so as the event ended, they let the media go in that room. They took us to lunch a couple block, about a block away, and we had this really nice lunch on the roof there in New York City. It was a beautiful nice. day, and that's when we learned that one of the the bonus gifts we were going to be given was our choice between a Surface Laptop 3 or a Surface Pro 7 with a keyboard, so the $1,000 one from Intel, not yeah. the AMD one. Because this was Intel was sponsoring the the gifting of that, so I I chose the Surface Laptop three, and I chose the silver. Well, we didn't have a choice. It's the i five eight gig one twenty eight. Mm -hmm. It's a great device. It runs mm -hmm. so well. I mean, it's probably going to become my primary traveler instead of Surface Book two. Sure, um, pretty pretty light. It very right? light yeah. battery. I I've tested it. It's got this fast charge feature. All the new surfaces this year, you can get to eighty percent charge on your battery within an hour. And I tested that and validated that works. So it's it's and it's it's got the new. St I almost used it for this tonight. I was going to say, let me try these studio mics because yeah. it's got each of these new surfaces have studio mics on them now instead of that kind of single deep mm -hmm. field mic. Mm -hmm. um, but but they really did a good job with it. I mean, I posted a video on Reddit of me doing the one finger open test, right? Because of the balance of this thing is so good now. You can actually open it. This is not a good example, but you can actually open the lid with one finger and it doesn't move on you. And I posted this on Twitter. Um, and then I put it on Reddit and it got like, it's the most viral thing I've ever posted on Reddit. But it's, they've done a really good job with it. Uh, the, the, the Alcantara is a different, kind of got a, a different uh, surfacing to it. It's not clothy, if that makes sense, if you've used the Alcantara before. And, of course, the bigger trackpad, the trackpad is massive. Um, and it's the same kind of keyboard, so it's the same great feel for typing and stuff like that. But they, they've really done a good job. But this is the silver one. The cobalt blue is simply beautiful. I, I just love cobalt blue. And um, they, um, so I think, you know, that and now the Surface Pro X is out. I got to see a couple of those last week um, because a few people had them at Ignite. Uh, and then, of course, you've seen all the reviews have come out and the, you know, the early reviews of that. A lot of people don't understand what an ARM device is and what an ARM device does and doesn't do. One reviewer today posted their review and complained that it didn't have Thunderbolt 3. Now, you know the problem there, right? Thunderbolt 3 is an Intel technology. Mm. This is a Qualcomm chip. Yeah. ARM doesn't do Intel. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. So they're complaining of it that it's a horrible embarrassment that it's not on there. It can't be, right, because of the device. Right. Um, I was sitting with Rich Woods last week at Ignite in the press room, and he had a Huawei Mate 8 or something like that, one of their ARM devices, because he still didn't have his Surface Pro X. And so, so the ARM stuff will run 32-bit apps in emulation. 
So even though it's an ARM processor, it will run a 32-bit app in an emulation later, layer. <clears throat> and what happens is, is on certain pro browsers don't do this, but most other normal programs, 32-bit programs, the co it gets kind of coded down right into ARM operational stuff, and then that's cached. And that's what runs when you run the 32-bit the app. He, I watched him open a browser, and it was the most slow, it's the slowest thing I'd ever seen. And then he just got the Canary ARM build for Edge, and he, he opened, so he was running Edge Canary in emulation, and I saw it, really chunky. Then he got the update for the Canary ARM build, and that thing opened like that. So if, if you understand the, the system, it's not Surface RT again, right? Surface RT wouldn't do emulation uh, when it came out. You could only do apps from the store that were compiled for, you know, ARM. Um, and in fact, if I remember right, wasn't Surface RT like system on chip or something like that? I don't even know if it was a normal. I got, I got one running right here. It, oh, do you? I Still? Just use, it runs my, it's my weather station. Mike, you were oh, going gotcha. to ask, ask a question, Mike. Yeah, sorry. Well, no, I was going to jump in and say, has so on the Mac side, you start to get into the 32-bit, 64-bit. Um, on Catalina, which is Mac's latest operating system, right. they have completely eliminated support for 32-bit apps. And it was completely. a big hole completely. You cannot wow. run a 32-bit app in Catalina. And it was this big thing they've started in the last operating system that they released last year. They started giving you warnings, saying this is not going to be compatible in the next operating system. Warnings, warnings. And, and for the most part, every app now... 64 bit, but there were right. a lot of like uh, legacy apps or little tiny tools that were used for very specific purposes that were still in 32 bit. Um, I didn't know you started getting into that. Has Windows talked about moving in that direction? Whereas, hey, we're only going to support 64 bit, or are they still very, we don't care? No, I, I don't think they formally said their intent. In fact, news broke earlier this week that it looks like they're going to they're gonna support emulation of 64 bit apps in okay. ARM uh, sometime late next year. That was a story Rich Woods from Neil Wynn wrote. Um, no, Microsoft has not come out and said 32-bit apps are going away. I, I I agree with you. More and more apps are moving that direction. Yeah. Right? The people are just – I think 64-bit apps are just better on the system, memory, all that. You know, all the, it's more efficient than 32-bit apps. So – but they haven't come out – I don't even remember hearing about them, Apple talking about Catalina and that. Yeah, they have. And so a lot of people are having to run, you know, either dual boot into Windows or run something like Parallels and run Windows there. Right. Or you can even run Parallels and run, you know, uh, Mojave on Mac, right, which still allowed 32-bit. The previous. Yep, the previous version. Um, but yeah, for Catalina, it was kind of a wow. bigger deal. And a lot of people who were just kind of following the upgrade path but weren't techies, they upgraded. And then one of and their favorite little their utility, yeah, didn't work. Wow. Um, all your major apps, right? Your Adobe Suite, your the, the main yeah, those Mac are apps, those are going to be 64-bit. Yeah. It was Office usually those tiny little bit. utilities that they used for something, right? Wow. And uh, and it kind of broke some of those. And, and for the most part, because Apple announced it so far ahead of time, even the little utilities that had development behind them were upgraded. But it was the utilities that haven't been developed in years that people were still using for something. Those are the ones that kind of struggled. But, wow. hey, you know what? Some of those little utilities are actually the things that people rely on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. They're still using an older version, whether that's well, a Well, and, and that's the big argument around Windows 7, right, that people still argue about staying on Windows 7 because of legacy or, or I've got something old and, right. and things like that. I, I just saw uh, Joe just chat, mentioned in chat about the default installation of Office is 32-bit, and that's correct. You have to go in and change that if you want the 64-bit. Um, but he also said Windows Home Server. The end of support for R2, 2008 R2 and Windows Home Server is in January along with Windows yeah. 7. Yeah. We don't talk a lot about those as we talk about Windows 7. No. But, man, Windows Home Server was the was the stuff. I know. Right? I know. It was good, wasn't it? I loved running that OS. Yeah. When that, there, in this audience, you know, I would say – if I was, was going to say the majority of these guys are from those days, right? The Windows Home <laughs> yeah, Server show. I'd be like, nobody runs that. But then in this audience, well, yeah, there's a good chance there's still <laughs> a bunch of home servers running out there. Rich, um, you know, I'm I'm not going to lie. You know, one of the things I, I never expected in 2019 to still be talking about 32 and 64 bit applications. Like, yeah. I thought we were done. You know, when we made the jump to 64 and and on the Intel side, anyways. And I just thought, God, finally, you know, we're, we're everything's that's done. That's a done deal, and we're moving forward. 
And really, you know, with the advent of the ARM processing, which has struggled to get there with this, yeah. right? And it still is. It's still not. No, good. it's, it's not no, mainstream yet. No, it's, and it's still not great. And I kind of think we need to think through the complete architecture of everything from scratch in some, some regards. It's kind of like, you know, we are still trying to bolt on uh, stuff to 30-year-old operating systems. And, and I, I really do think it kind of is going to take a rethinking of our devices. Now, I think that rethinking is, on the, is at the phone, right? I mean, I think when we think of Android and iOS, I don't, you know, I don't, and I know Mac is doing, a, is, you know, Apple's doing a lot of things to bring the iOS and Mac operating system together. By the way, I think they found out that's just as hard as Microsoft yeah, trying Microsoft to come, found it out, yeah. come up with its own phone system, you know, phone OS and, and such. But man, I just did not see a struggling. It, I think it's worse today, understanding now operating systems just work today. So people don't struggle with them, I think, as much as they used to. 95. 97, Windows oh, yeah, 2000. Right. Those were you awful years. Configure, you had to really know how to do things, batch files. and Yeah. You know, to... But I think there's more confusion today about what can and can't happen. And I've got this. And what can I do? And what can I do? And can I run these things? And can I not run them? And do I have a truck or a car? You know, it's just, it's super confusing. I think the consumer is kind of tired of having to figure some of that stuff out. I, I, okay, so my label of everyday users, right? People who just turn on their computer and use it like an appliance. I, I think the reason why this is becoming more obvious is things like what Mike just mentioned, right? So Apple in Catalina has decided to drop 32-bit apps. Uh, as we see more ARM processors coming out, because at the moment, Intel's ARM stuff only emulates 32-bit apps. It doesn't emulate 64-bit. So if you tried, and in fact, at least they've taken a step now in the Microsoft Store, in the Windows Store on Windows 10 to mark apps now that won't work on that system. Um, and and the, kind of the jury's still out on Microsoft's first ARM-based Windows, truly ARM. Surface RT was ARM-based. Surface 2 was ARM-based. Surface 3 was ARM-based, right? Surface, yeah. No, Surface 3 moved to Intel. Just, the, just the Surface, right? The just, Surface 3. The yeah, surface, surface 3. Not yeah. Surface Pro, but the no, Surface. No, no, no. Surface yeah, 3. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. an ARM. That was right. the first Intel, right? Because RT and Surface 2 was <sighs> ARM-based. Yeah, yeah. If I remember right. So, so, and those were locked to the Windows Store, so you couldn't put outside apps on there. The closest we've gotten to that in the recent few years is Windows 10 S or in S mode, right? Where you can't right. install stuff right. from outside the store. Um, although they've now... Uh, implemented a group policy that if you want to run Windows 10 S, you can have a setting that you push out via group policy yeah. that will allow the install of, um, uh, you know, apps out. You designate them, though. You're doing that through your deployment systems. But but so we're seeing our first real, I mean, there's been other Windows 10 on ARM devices, Huawei, like the Mate 8, or I think it's the Mate 8 that Rich showed me last week. But we're just really getting into this use an arm as a day-to-day -day driver for windows for windows 10 and if they truly bring the 64-bit emulation in i don't know if it's more efficient than 32-bit because 32-bit emulation looks horrible right you have it's yeah. chunky you got to wait on it. it it's just got these obvious delays compared to a native app compiled for that device so and you can even see it in some of the reviews a lot of people don't understand exactly what the Surface Pro X is and what it's supposed to be able to do or not do. I saw another reviewer that wrote, um, because there's no Thunderbolt 3, which there can't be, they can't plug in an external graphics card. They, they tried to run a game on it. It wouldn't run the game very well. Well, these devices aren't built for that. No, these no. devices are built for road warriors, right? They're, net, they're netbooks. It, it, it mean, is the right? modern day version yeah. of a netbook yeah, in the right, sense, right. from the perspective they're, they're supposed to be good on battery, uh, so low power requirements in that sense. Um, LTE, this one comes LTE capable day one. So the chip, yeah. is, it's right there. Upgradable, that's the other big thing that came out of the October Surface event. Surface Laptop 3 and Surface Pro X can both have their hard drives upgraded. Mm -hmm. So they didn't glue the lid down on the Surface Laptop yeah. 3 this time. Yeah. It's actually four feet with the special screw and then magnets hold the, the deck down. And you can get in there and change the the SSD. On the Surface Pro X, it's all on the back under the kickstand. One little push of a of a SIM tool, 
pops open. There's a slot for the SIM, and there's the SSD nice. one screw holding it in. Nice. Well, that'll, that'll make I that. Think, yeah. I think that will be your future Surface Pro line. Yeah. That's kind of, instead of having to take the lid off, you would be able to get upgrade the hard drive. I've already saw one guy on Reddit who's done it. He's posted the instructions. Mm. He bought the 128 unit, and he, he installed either a 256 or a 512. So he, he sourced the SSD, the right kind of SSD, and did that upgrade himself. Now, Rich, you said yourself, you picked up that Surface Pro mm -hmm. or that Surface, Surface Laptop, Laptop 3. 3. And you said you're going to make it, I think this is going to be my daily driver. Yeah, I think so. In, Intel-based, right? Yes, that's right. And pretty traditional. Like, yes, very much It's so. the most traditional way to run Windows. And, and I, I still think, like, we're doing all these gyrations. Microsoft's doing all these gyrations to try and get ARM working and figuring yeah. out some other things. And yet... I still think, you know, I picked up a new laptop and a new Lenovo laptop at work and we've switched, we've gone AMD on those. Mm. And I asked, I asked them, really? Like, really? And AMD's like, yeah, always you, struggled on laptops. I know, I know. And, and in I fact, Surface Laptop 3 reviews of the 15 inch with AMD were not very good. Not good. Like, yeah. this has always been those things where there's always, always been this promise of competition with AMD. And, oh, yeah, if we can just get AMD in there and they're half the price and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then the performance has just never lived up yeah. to it. So I asked him, I asked our tech support, you know, support guys, like, well, how's that going? And they're like, well, in the <laughs> beginning, tons of driver <clears throat> problems, right? Because yeah. The hardware is all completely different from what they were used to kind of working. Not all, but a lot. Right. And they said, once we got the driver issues worked out, they've been running pretty well. And I've been running mine for just a couple of days, three, four days, maybe. Don't notice a big difference bet between my Intel laptop uh, and my AMD laptop. Now, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a performance guy. Um, oh. we, he'll come back here in just a second. Um, I probably forgot to plug in his laptop. The <laughs> mic just dropped out if you're listening to the audio version of this. So I may be, Rich, I may be on my first AMD laptop that actually is comparable to what it was on the on the Intel side. But I still struggle a little bit to kind of think, like, is AMD ever going to real? I mean, they keep I trying, right? Yeah, they keep trying. And, you know, every desktop system I build, I build AMD. Yeah, because well, I can get that little bit more bang for the dollar yeah. compared to Intel. Well, Intel the thread chips rippers are, are doing well. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> no, I know. And so I choose to build AMD systems. And in fact, I've got one, two, three of them in here running. Right, I kind of cycle them around mm -hmm. from my main desktop to my this podcaster to Margo, and they kind of make their way around the room. But and I do a build probably every two to three years, and I always build myself in an upgrades jump. Right, right? a little right. kind of incremental, but I, on desktop, I've never, you know, but I was surprised at how poorly it looked, it performed in Surface Laptop 3. And, and and possibly this exists because Microsoft just wants Intel to know we're capable of building hardware without your chips. Yeah, right? so no, for sure. Qualcomm on for the, sure. Yeah. The, the ARM. I built, we were releasing and building some ARM or some AMD based computers. Um, but AMD, like I said, AMD laptops, they've never quite broken into that market. No. It's the Intel has owned that. I know. I know. So, I had a, I had an HP, HP. Oh, Andrew talked me into buying this years ago and it was an AMD based processor and just never really, it was kind of in the, those netbook days and it was a little underperformer, but it was cheap. Yeah. Like yep. that no, thing that's, was that's cheap. That's you'll save on if you're yeah. willing to give up yeah. a little bit on the performance. I have been, and this is the 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 chip in the Surface Laptop Three is the tenth generation Intel Ice Lake, right? I five really, really uh, I five I five eight yeah. gig of RAM, and yep. I'm telling you, this thing yeah. this, it doesn't quite beat Surface Book Two because the Surface Book Two I have is an i seven eight gen. I think those were eighth gen. So, but it, I mean, I had this original Surface Laptop, and and this thing just smokes it. I mean, it really efficient and 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 runs yeah. well. Yeah. Well, I think that goes to say, you know, you've got a pretty tried and tested, uh, you know, Intel, <laughs> Intel based system and a uh, an operating system that has been built for 25 years Yeah. to do that. And I just think it's it's tough today. There's wishful thinking, but I think it's tough today to beat 
an Intel based, especially the laptop. Now, the the problem is the battery life is always terrible, right? That's yeah. Intel. Just you know, you're going to get four hours. That's kind of that's yeah. kind of what it boils down to is is four. But you're so that Surface Laptop three, you're really liking it, oh, and I'm very much so. And what do you think? What's the retail on that? Uh, this retail spec? this in this spec is nine ninety nine. Yeah, it, 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 that was kind of the limitation they put on us for yeah. the gift that they okay. gave us. Okay. The Surface Pro yeah. 7 with the keyboard was was in that ballpark as well. Okay. Yeah. So that was our choice. Um, so this, yeah, I believe the retail on this in this configuration is one is nine ninety nine. Still not bad, and I think no. there'll probably be some deals at Christmas time. Oh, right? easily, Don't you think? and there, yeah. the, I think Black Friday and Christmas time and stuff like that. I mean, today uh, Microsoft had their big Xbox uh, XO nineteen event launch over in london and they've already pre shown off their black friday deals i mean there's a yeah. there's a deal for the digital xbox one s for 150 dollars. yeah 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 i i think it just now's the time to watch i i just oh, yeah. you know when i switch laptops Gallup has a deal which is great you can buy your your old device oh, for, okay. for 50 bucks oh that's and very cool that, that does two things one it's great for the employee like you think okay i'm getting a three-year-old piece of equipment that i took care of for 50 bucks and it incents you to take care of it. Right. I mean, right, because right. you're like, do, do I want to get to the end of this thing and have a piece of it left to be able to do it? So I'll probably move that That's over to, cool. to, to Sarah and that worked out pretty well. But, but um, you were also at ignite and I was, yeah. give me your impressions, you know, ignite a little more developer focus this year. Uh, a little IT bit, pro, right? I would say the yeah, yeah, developer okay. aspects as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there was some consumer things to latch on to. Um, the um, I, I guess I, I they they officially launched the uh, general availability of Hololens two, so that that I think it was Wednesday of last week that became yeah. available uh, for those that are purchasing it. Yeah. Edge was in the the Ignite mm -hmm. news clan a bit. The new Edge Edge based Chromium on Chromium, and it's it's in it's out of preview and all that other stuff, right? Not right out now? of preview, no. Okay. So we okay. still so this is going to continue to be developed uh, through a uh, just like Chrome does, right? So Chrome there's a Canary channel, yeah. That's a daily build. Then there's the Dev channel that's updated weekly. Then there's a beta channel that's updated about every six weeks, and then there will be a stable build. They have they formally announced that the target for general availability is the 15th of January of next uh, next year. So here in about, I don't know, that's about two months away. So um, they have released what they are labeling a release candidate, and that's in the beta channel. So it's kind of, it's beta, but it's release candidate. So that's the channel, because the normal process will be, once this goes GA, is that there'll always be Canary for testing, there'll always be Dev for testing, and then there's beta, and those are supposed to be kind of from Canary being a little less reliable, dev a little more reliable, and then beta even more so, and then stable, of course. So stable and beta will both release about every six weeks, give or take. Dev weekly. Um, I've been running this stuff since April. As the different channels have come out, I run them all. I have them all installed on my devices, and they run great. I haven't had any major issues with it. Um, and of course, if you were paying attention last week, the new logo was released for yeah, Edge. Yeah. The kind of the kind of separate it, and it's kind of separate it, it, right? Step it away from the the Edge. Spark. Yeah. What was the original Edge that came with Windows 10? Did, did you try Streamyard on Edge? Um, uh, to, I am to... in Edge Canary. Okay. Oh no, I'm in Edge. Well, okay. So I mentioned there was Edge Canary, Edge Dev, and Edge Beta, right? But there was an accessible build that is an unbranded not branded canary dev it's it's the stable channel yeah the link was on I, I think microsoft i have servers. that yeah, yeah the link was on microsoft servers and when you install this it basically hides away the original edge it's still on your system can still be accessed in fact they give enterprises instructions on how they can still access it but uh it basically takes over you can make any of them your default but so i'm in that one so i am running a beta build of edge and i'm doing Streamyard and that and it's running fine good yeah compatibility no, it should. wise it's it all there right yeah because it's chrome. it's chrome so edge microsoft's got their own library of extensions that have been updated for edge chromium but you can go to the chrome web store and install with one button change right. of setting you can install extensions from the store yeah yeah um when you think about the future 
like okay, you know, you mentioned Hololens and uh, uh, VR and AR is I, I, I we're in a lull with those. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's found its footing yet. No, I don't think it has. When when you're thinking right now is going into the Christmas season, what 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 do you get excited about? What kinds of what kinds of things? What are you oh, excited man. about technology wise right now? Uyghur, where's you think about that, Rich? Where's your UPS, dude? <laughs> That's a story. <laughs> this is a story. Okay, so we had a power blip. That's why I went out and. The I that's exactly what I did, Jim. My computer shut off. I'm like, because the lights, you know, they did the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I looked down. Why well, I had just messed with everything, and I had plugged the power strip that's in all my my essentials. This is good. I found it out tonight. Yeah. Uh, my essentials power strip was plugged into the right side of the UPS, which is just surge, just not battery. Yeah. So my Xbox, all that stuff was on the wrong. Uh, Line and then so my Mac so I'm not even on coming coming to you from the same computer I had to go run and grab a my my laptop because my Mac decided that hey I'm rebooting why don't I do that update that I've been waiting to do <laughs> hang and on so, a minute hang on hang hang yeah. hang on hang on now people complain about Windows doing that stuff <laughs> yeah I, that doesn't well, happen in the Mac world it, it does when you click the button uh, update next time now update next time right I right right next Let's time you restart. so it's like hey you restarted. <laughs> I, I think you want to install just something. Just doing what it, what you told it to do. Yeah, right so I, essentially I told Jim it would be a few minutes. I had to run up and grab the laptop. And luckily I was able to switch yeah. some USB ports, so it shouldn't look or sound any different. But no, you're fine. Totally you're different you're computer fine. now. I had just asked Rich right before he came in. Uh, he'd given us a little bit on Ignite. So he's been through a hardware and a software event. And I was kind of – so I was asking him, what's he excited about? We're, you're, we're coming up on, you know, the retail – moment in america and really around the world and as we think about what we get excited about around technology rich what what mike do you want to add to that well there was one question i was waiting to ask actually oh, on this yeah, yeah. and Go it's ahead. you know you mentioned rich the surface book i think is the pro mm -hmm. the new product you have right in front of you oh, surface laptop three surface laptop three yeah so as i'm thinking about that so explain to the you know the three of us in this audience <laughs> who are not microsoft guys that laptop, right, is the Microsoft branded the laptop. When I'm looking to getting a new, if I'm getting into the Microsoft space, um, I think there are right now. I've talked to a lot of people who are typical Mac people who are like, hey, now we're open to a lot of things, right? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing kind of a, a mass like, hey, everything's good now. Is that laptop really, would you call that the go-to laptop for someone who's looking to now get into the Microsoft space? Uh, it wouldn't be a bad way to, if you don't want to go with the the Surface tablet style, and, right? Yeah, and a lot of my people aren't actually because they're don't used get to that Mac, keyboard, right? Because right? Mac doesn't. They're like, I'm so not they want a typical guy. clamshell. Yeah, they want a clamshell. Right. They want a powerful laptop they can use for editing, for basic browsing, things like that. Well, this this is the low end, right? This is the i5, eight gig of RAM, 128 gig, and it's performing well. But it comes in an i7 model, right? Okay. And you can bump up the RAM, you can bump up the storage. And of course, that's going to take your. This is a nine hundred ninety nine dollar device. You're talking so, to a Mac guy. He's used to overpaying for everything. Oh, I was going to say, I'm like, yeah, that, that's that's great. So that's, this uh, is a thousand dollars. So a third in this of the price of what I'm used to paying for the same hardware. Got for it. For i5. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke, but, yeah. I mean, right. but um, the Apple tax is a real thing. Right, and yeah. and there's a little bit of a surface tax, okay? Because as an i, I can go get an i5 eight gig with a hundred twenty eight gig SSD probably in the five to six hundred dollar ballpark to get a yeah. really nice laptop windows laptop but again th so there is a bit of a surface tax when it comes to this hardware as well but like i said the top end on these you can go to an i7 i think you can get up i forget how high the ram goes and the, the storage so there are powerful options for this i think for what i do because this isn't a gaming machine it's not built that way um so if you want portability pretty decent battery life Decent performance for doing your day-to-day -day kind of, you know, you're not going to be doing Photoshop, a heavy-duty Photoshop or video editing. But I, I think it could be that entry point uh, to kind of, because it is that typical clamshell. And the, the big difference this time with Surface Laptop 3 is you now have options for an all-metal device. You can get away from the Alcantara if you want to. And like I mentioned, the Alcantara does have a different coating on it. So it... it and they changed the coloring, right, on all the keyboards. They're a little darker now. So they, they're kind of modeled a little bit more in order to pick to kind of hide some of that that stuff that comes on them. But if you compare, um, but this is, the surface layer has just got, in fact, Ralph Grohn told me at a surface event either earlier this year or last year, um, he explained this to me because they started doing it on, on those that, that launch. 
it, it's intended to repel the hand oils and things that we tend to have on our hands right. at the time. So, but now with the option of metal decks, you know, you can, you can, they had a, they called it sandstone, I think. It's basically rose gold. Uh, they had a version of that. Um, and I, again, the, the colors and the sizing is because they did release a 15 inch Surface Laptop 3. So there are configurations that come with the 15 inch. If you want 15 inch, I think it's only AMD unless you go buy the business version, which is possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's Good to know. I, uh, that's an i7. Because that, that whole new line, I think, um, if you haven't kept up with Microsoft, can be a little bit confusing when you get into it. Okay, there's there's Surface Book, yeah. there's the Surface, yeah. there's all yeah. this. Like, what if I if I just want to get into it? Um, and I think the biggest complaint from people from the Mac side who were looking to switch was with the Surfaces, well, that keyboard, it collapses. And I said, right. no, 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 there's a new line out there, the Surface Book line, right? Which well, is this, more that rigid classic clamshell. Well, the Surface Book is the one with the detachable clipboard, the detachable screen. Yeah, see, it's even confused you. Oh, wow. See, that's, now that I'm is even, not where I would confused. go. Okay. So yeah. you have you have your Surface Pros, right? That Surface Pro line with the kickstand and the right. detachable keyboard. Yeah. Then you Surface Laptop. This is third generation of Surface Laptop. So and and then you have Surface Book One, Surface Book Two. Okay. Yeah. See, so so even I was the confused. laptop is what you. Would the be laptop like, is what you're looking at, and I think what, that's not yeah, a bad the, target. The Mac convert who wants yep. their I Mac think that Pro would be, comparable version. Yeah. Yes. Because when when it comes down to to kind of the the weight, um, you know, well, it looks the, like a MacBook Air is really it, what it looks like. It 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 isn't far off of that look. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's pretty thin up there for the screen. Yep. It's got the one set of vents back here for the fan, but it fan hardly ever kicks on when I'm using it. Yeah. Um, and so they've done a real good job. And these ice lake, these Intel ice lake chips are really good performers. So mm-hmm. I was, I was a little worried, kind of, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I was happy to get it, but I was thinking, ah, I five, I'd really like to have an I seven there, but it's actually turned out to be a pretty good device. So, right. so Feel, it feels good in the hand. Like it when feels you, great. When I you mean, close really that thing does. and carrying it around. It, it they uh, like I said that for me, you know, just the simple ability to be able to do that with yeah. one finger. Yeah. If you do that with the original Surface laptop, that sucker's sliding across the desk. <laughs> it, it Want to clarify? He's using it. his pointer finger for the one yeah. finger. So. <laughs> for those of yeah, you in audio. <laughs> yeah. So so they've really and Mary Jo Foley, who is is famous for her lappable right thing she bought the surface laptop 3 herself and i think she bought the amd the 15 inch but she loves it because of the balance because of you know that's just opening the lid but that means they have placed all the weight in the butt base in a manner that really sets it securely so if it's on your lap or on your desk it feels a lot more balanced you got the spring right you got the balance right you got the weighting right i mean and it's weird i mean you got to get a the components in there and yep. there's oh, there's a finite amount of components plus where do they go so the it takes so some it, really it does, good engineering it it has the surface connect so it still has surface connect on it um but on they did add um let me see yeah there you go so USB C, USB A, and then i think that's the headphone jack yeah the headphone jack but so they did add c to it so you can actually charge via that c port if you wanted to but the fast charging uses the surface connect and it has to be closed you you don't fast charge when you're using it okay so yeah and I, that I, I never liked that surface connect um port it was kind of they had bigger plans in the beginning I think they did yeah and then it just never it just and they never stuck came with to it me. for compatibility yeah 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 no okay so back to my question now that Uyghur has distracted holidays us long enough. Yeah. And tech. as we think about yeah i was thinking about going to the holiday season and you think about you know what, what do you get excited about this and it can be anything. It doesn't have to be any Microsoft stuff or whatever. But what are you, what are you excited about? Uh, well, you know, um, I sat and watched that Xbox event today, right? It, you know, hardware is hardware, right? You're going to find there's going to be great deals on hardware no matter what. You know, if you're running an older Windows 7 piece of hardware, I actually wouldn't be paying a whole lot of attention to upgrading a Windows 7 device. I'd go buy me a new Windows 10 device. Yeah. There's really good deals out there, and especially over Thanksgiving and the holidays. So if you've got to upgrade before January, why not go sh- do some shopping and, and take an opportunity? I don't know if Surface Laptop is your target, or but there's plenty of great deals out there. Um, from a gamer's perspective, right, Microsoft today had their big Xbox unveils for tons of stuff. 
and I am currently set and waiting for access. I, I am crazy excited for Microsoft Simulator, Flight Simulator 2020. Mm. Mm. If you saw the preview trailer for that from E3, they just released a new trailer today. They announced some of the, the uh, uh, airplanes that are going to be part of the package, their partners there. It, it has been absolutely beautiful watching it, and we're waiting on Tech Alpha access. Uh, they had a event a few weeks ago in Redmond where they took people to an airport in a hangar. They had systems set up with proper, you know, yokes and pedals and everything. And uh, so they showed people the game, got them flying a little bit, doing takeoffs and controlling it in the air, and then they put them in a real airplane. Pilot instructor took off and handed them the controls. Wow. And people were flying after having flown the game. Wow. That's great. I wish I'd been able to be there. <laughs> that would have been awesome. I wouldn't so, have gotten in that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a million years. Well, there is an instructor pilot. Yeah, no. Um, I know. So, but so I'm, I'm a weenie a when it comes. going on with Xbox. Like I mentioned, one of the deals they got for Black Friday, I think, is an Xbox One S digital, uh, which is <sighs> HDR compatible. So if you're on a 4K TV, you get the HDR piece. Um, it's $150 for that it's console. It's the way to go. It's, like uh, I have yeah. an Xbox One S, and... Yep. That was so I had the original Xbox One, right? X, Xbox One, not the X. And then I went when I finally got my 4K TV, I then got the I traded in the Xbox One, got the S, now I got HDR. And HDR makes a massive difference in the gaming experience. Um, Microsoft also announced their uh, what are they calling that thing? Um, uh, Xbox oh, Xbox All Access. So this is basically your ability to buy a console with two years of Xbox Game Pass, which includes now Xbox Live. Um, and what's the other thing? Um, so it's like a two-year purchase, right? Yeah, you no get everything. Yeah. Gold, ultimate, you get all that stuff. And if right. you do it now, they let you upgrade to the new Xbox that's coming out next year. Scarlet, right? So if you Scarlet. do it by the end of December, yeah. yep. you only have to pay in 12 months on this console that you get. And then you, you're eligible to bump up to the Scarlet next year when it comes out. Now, it doesn't and, – and one question I had was, okay, so do I get 12 months of credit of payment towards that new one? No, you have to restart no, your two-year. What they're letting you do is you don't have to finish out that second year. You don't have year. to finish. So you got 12 right. months out of the console right. you have. You still got your – you're still going to have your Xbox Game Pass. And Game Pass has grown so – anybody who owns an Xbox One, if you don't have Game Pass, you are losing right off I the bat. I agree with you. I, I agree. I haven't had to, to mess around with buying games for so long. I'm Xbox, so basically they took Xbox Live Gold, took this library subscription of games and melded them, right? So now you get your Xbox Live in there, you get all these games. Xbox Studio announcements for first-party games, day one in Xbox Game Pass. So that means Forza Horizon 4 was in there day one. Mm -hmm. Today they announced that Halo Reach... The first version of Halo that will be on PC is coming out on December 3rd, day one, Xbox Game Pass. Day one. So, so, and every, so Sea of Thieves, um, any, anything built by Microsoft in their game studios, which they're growing, will be day one available through Game Pass at no extra cost. Such a deal. So and if you're not an stone. Xbox Game Pass customer right now, it's a dollar for three months. Yeah. They're doing another one dollar deal if you yeah. Yeah. sign up. It's a good so, deal. So, so the deals are out there. If you're an enthusiast or something like that, I think there's going to be great computer deals. I think there might be some companies looking at the Windows 7 thing and maybe trying. But I think most consumers beyond an audience like yours, Jim, you know, or enthusiasts who know what they're doing, I, the vast majority of, of consumers, everyday users, are probably on Windows 10 by now, you know, or they've replaced a piece of hardware or something like that. So, I, you know, the gaming stuff, the hardware stuff, AR, VR, eh, I'm not so sure. Everybody wants to do something there, spectacles and, you know, all that kind of thing. But I don't know. I, yeah. I just yeah. – my, my, my Acer 3D uh, – what, 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 what were they called in those days? Uh, what did we call those for Windows 10? Augmented? Yeah, augmented reality. My or, AR headset sits in yeah. a corner collecting dust somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, haven't had it out not a lot of applications time. for it. You know, no, they're, they're kind of fun and they're kind of a gimmick while you're yes. doing it. And so it's maybe over a weekend you play it and then you're kind of like, mm, yeah. I don't know. Mike, what about you? What do you, what do you, what do you get excited about as you look ahead? Well, 
the thing I get excited about is I know that, you know, Windows 10 and Xbox have been coming together as far as gaming right across both. Mm -hmm. Man, what I really love to see is I have, you know, Call of Duty is a game to me that's nostalgic because that was obviously back from my high school days when I was in college with my roommates when we had three TVs in the dorm. That is the game to me that we all played. And I've I've ignored the last probably three or four versions because it's been, it, it just hasn't been the same Call of Duty. This year they came out with Call of Duty that was kind of back to the basics, which is why I bought it. First version I bought in a while. And my buddy actually was in town. Uh, my college roommate was in town from California. So we bought it that weekend. We played. Um, but really, you know, bringing it back to the tech angle of this, it is one of the first games that has implemented cross-platform in such a good way. So mm. Call of Duty, the Modern Warfare, the new version, the way the cross-platform works is you can play with guys. If I, So I'm on an Xbox. Uh, I have the Xbox One S. And I can play with PS4 guys and console guys. And But the, the great part about it is the implementation. When I'm in a lobby, I see exactly who I'm playing with. I see Xbox. I see a TV icon if they're a different console, so PS4, or a tower if they're PC. But the great part about it is, is that as long as everyone in my party is on a controller... It's only going to pair me with other controller players because the big discrepancy here is, hey, I don't want to play with mouse. PC guys or on a keyboard and mouse. Exactly. Um, it'll put me with PC guys as long as they're on an Xbox controller, but it won't put me with them unless uh, if I have someone in my party who's also on a PC keyboard and mouse, then it's then it's the Wild West. Then, hey, you get paired with anyone. Uh, but the implementation has been so smooth. And the fact that you have the Activision account in the background, so I can have a friends list in Call of Duty that is cross-platform. So me and my buddy who has, he has, he's been a lifelong friend of mine since we were, you know, three years old. He has always been a PS4 guy. I've always been Xbox. This is the first time we've ever been able to play together. And it's glorious. Like It is just one of the best experiences. And I found that even the PC guys, because you're getting paired based off your control input, has been great. So I love seeing the cross-platform aspect of all of this. And I know that Xbox and and PC have been working really well together as far as you buy a game. Maybe you it counts for both. Um, the Xbox app on Microsoft is great. Um, on sorry, on Windows is great. I've used that app a, a bunch when I've been doing streaming to get a party. Uh, so it's just an exciting time for gaming, I think, because of all this cross-platform play. And But it, it wasn't the way I thought it would be. I thought it would be... Microsoft and Sony kind of getting together and playing nice together. It's been the game developers who have done yeah. it on their own. They said, hey, we can take this. We'll have our own friends list. That's the only downside is that really your friends list is game by game, not some sort of massive cross-platform console-based system. Uh, but I don't really care because you know, there's only a few games I'm going to play cross-platform. And, and Call of Duty, I think, just knocked it out of the park when it came to this is how it's supposed to be. And more of it's coming. They announced—I forget which game it was today—but they specifically mentioned cross-platform day one. So, so obviously it is becoming more and more of a focus. You mentioned streaming. Let's yep. talk about a little bit about Project X Cloud. Um, Microsoft is—that's been in preview now for about a month. They said today during this event in London that more invites were going out tonight or today to people. This, you know, over the next day or so. Um, basically, the, if you've not heard of this, it's basically, and they added 50 more games to the library. So it was very limited in the first few weeks of the preview. Now there are over 50 titles, including Madden 20, uh, Forza Horizon 4. So all these titles have been added to this. So that's you basically connecting to the Internet on your phone paired to a Bluetooth controller gaming on your phone screen. And from everybody that I talked to and I've seen it done, it runs extremely well. Yeah. Uh, if you're on the I think all the channels in Xbox Insider now have console streaming, so that you can do actually within your house, right? That was always possible through Windows 10, but that now works outside your home as well. So you can actually stream from your console. It's kind of slick when you turn on your console when you're streaming to your phone. It doesn't turn on the power. You know how that big bright button is? It doesn't turn that on. So you can you can actually stream from your console. I'm in that right now. I'm not in X. Really, I had no idea that was even an option. Yep, it, I didn't set anything. I just I pair it to my Bluetooth controller. I, I got um, so I, I got the little nifty thing right. Oh, so that's I'll an Xbox it. controller with like an adapter to hold a phone, right? I lost my headphones. But um, so you get the little controller thing here. You pair it with that, and I. It, it's really laggy on the home network. I'll show it now. That So you get the um, 
you get the option here to uh, there's an app that you download you pair it with the Bluetooth controller and it it automatically sets up so it will it knows that I'm on my home network so it, it asked me to connect so I can connect to my device and now I'm connecting to my Xbox which, which is in the same on the same network it's in my living room and so but if you were looking at my Xbox in the living room the light wouldn't be on so it keeps that turned off when it's doing this console streaming thing um, I, I had find no it bit, idea this existed, Rich. This is this is great. Yeah, the, and so Project S Cloud has gotten all the attention, but the console streaming allows you to stream any game on your console, kind of wait the way we were doing to Windows 10, right? Yeah. So there's right. my console. That's my console start screen. Yeah. It's your and full console uh, right there. and in fact, they uh, so I can the game that I really uh, test this with is uh, actually I. See, I forget you use your controller, not the uh, <laughs> not the screen, not the screen. <laughs> so and so this is loading up the game, a little game called Race the Sun, uh, which is very low impact. If I run Forza Horizon 4, it goes choppy. So it, mm. but Project X Cloud, I'm told, runs so much better um, on through this process. So it lets me sign in. Come on. There you go. You, so have, a new, you have a new screen, toy, Mike. So, so the console stream, if you're on the I'm insider builds, if you're on, if you're on alpha, beta, or delta, I believe it's at all of the levels now. So you can actually, it's a really easy setup process using the app. You have to pair it with the Bluetooth controller for it to work. Um, and um, so there's the game loading up, and I can, uh, I can fly. How, how do I know, Rich, if I have the Bluetooth controller? Is that, was, uh, well, the is Bluetooth, that standard? No, it's not standard. Okay. I think if you get an Xbox One S and beyond or an X, you probably, because the Bluetooth controller came out later. So, that, um, so, so here, you'll, you'll have to check that. Um, this, this, this is the one that came with my S. Um, Chances are it's Bluetooth? I suspect that is. Okay. Yeah. So, you, okay. so if you download the app and if you're on the preview builds, you'll be able to run the app, go through the setup process, and it sends you to your console to do a couple things, and it will connect everything. Okay. So it what they're trying to do here with the gaming is to get the gaming necessarily off the big screens, right? Yeah. Give it to you when you're remote somewhere. So I, for instance, you know, we travel for Thanksgiving. I usually take my Xbox with me because I have free time to be able to pay attention to some gaming. Um, I, I don't know that I'll do that this year. I, I'm going to attempt this mode, right? And especially if I get an X cloud invite in the next couple of days, I'm working the system hard trying to find one <laughs> um, because I really want to give that a shot because it's supposed to be very, very good. So, but it's cool stuff. So think yeah. about it. Would yeah. you have ever thought that you could, I mean, I, I would remember being fascinated when we could stream from Xbox to our Windows 10 device, right? I was sitting in my office away from my, my Xbox streaming games to the computer. I mean, that was just kind of. Well, let's be honest though. That's to directly compete with the Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo, right. so the portable stuff, so yeah. like Nintendo yeah, Switch, yeah. Um, I think it was not a mistake today, and I'm sure Microsoft had it in the plans to expand the library to 50 games, yeah. because if, you know, if you've been paying attention the last week, Google Stadia, Stadia is going to launch with like 14 games right. in the library. So there was a little poke in the eye there by <laughs> Microsoft today to say, well, we're going to have 50. And, oh, by the way, if you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber... That is included at no extra cost. Mm -hmm. Project X Cloud will be yeah. when it comes out GA. Yeah. Well, it's funny how we got here. I, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say I thought as we were talking about this, I really think games like this is the this is the winter of games. And yeah. I, I like everybody. Google's got their thing. Microsoft's got their yep. thing. Nintendo, the Nintendo system is strong right now. I mean, they, they are doing some great stuff. And games are just super easy. Like, and, and they just kind of work for people. And I just, I think this is kind of the winner of gaming and we're going to spend a ton of time. That's, a, that's actually a good know? point. You know, yeah. it, it's, we're, you know, yeah, because of all this portability coming, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's no, I mean, point. just think about it. We all the, you know, what Microsoft's doing and the new, the new hardware, the new equipment, we've got yeah. that. We've got the cloud. Google's going after it. Nintendo's going after yeah. it. Sony's going after it. Um, I just, God, we just, if you're not paying attention in the gaming space. Now, I'm not a big gamer, but it's interesting. It's an interesting yeah. space. And it's done some things. I was talking, I was having this conversation about gaming as driving cloud 
compute. Uh, it, Microsoft co- is putting these Xbox blades in their servers, in their data yeah. centers. That's where it, it's coming from. It's changing the way the data center works for, yeah. as far as being able to provide compute. And now there's so much more GPU compute going in because these games take this. Who knows what kinds of, you know, what kinds of additional um, innovations that's going to drive right. as we get more compute yeah. in that space. So Because that's what they're doing. Again, uh, Microsoft is big in their gaming stuff. It's a good business for them, but they are gaining benefits from that for their enterprise work and their the other yeah, stuff. No doubt. No. For sure, Rich, we've kept you long enough. Anything else we missed? On your uh, end? No. You know, there's a lot going on, and and I, the the build up to January 14th and the end of Windows 7. There's still going to be folks on Windows 7 when that happens. I mean, there's going to be circumstances that people. If you're a consumer, you got to find a way to get out of it, right? And like we mentioned earlier, somebody had asked, you can still do a free upgrade. That possibility still exists. And, you know, to be honest, Windows 10 runs pretty decently on old hardware. It doesn't do bad. Uh, I remember pulling out an old laptop from, like, 2004. Or maybe it wasn't that old. Maybe it was, like, 2010, 20. But for six, seven, eight years old. And it ran Windows. I upgraded it to Windows 10. Yeah, it can run it. It's just if if you have less than four gig of, me- of memory. Yeah, you, I think eight gig has become the new bottom. It really kind of has. Is I've been monitoring it here in my systems. You know, sixteen, thirty two, sixteen, eight are, are my systems, and you can really tell. Uh, you know, and especially I've been watching resource utilization. Uh, we've been doing some VM stuff. By the way. There's no need to do server anymore for the average consumer. Via like on Windows 10, you can just run Hyper-V, yep. and it runs great. Yep. You know, and and I've been I've been spinning up instances of unactivated Windows instances, and they give you I don't know how long they give you on those things, but long enough that not that worried about it. Um, I'll tear them down or rebuild them if I need to, especially right. if I'm in the test space, and so that works out pretty well. You need to have a little bit of RAM for that and some hard drive space to kind of make that work, but it's available in Windows 10. It's pretty, yep. I don't have to go to server anymore to, to kind of get that done. Mike, anything else you'd add? No. I, I mean, the gaming side is just something I've been so excited about. So it was very, I liked hearing that update about xCloud. Yeah. No, I think we're going to, and we're not a big gaming podcast here. Uh, we talk about it from time to time, but I do think, um, I do think, Rich, it's just going to get, it's going to get b- bigger and better. Hey, okay, let's get a quick update on you, Rich, before you go. Um, what, so you're doing some other things with the church, yeah. but, and you're not podcasting anymore. Are you keeping windows observer.com yeah. up to date? Windows, windows and server is still up and running. Well, technically it is up and running after four days of trying to get my <laughs> former host to get So basically uh, another story, I, I, that's a whole nother ball of wax, yeah, but yeah, yes, yeah. windows observer is still up there. When, when OBS, my wiki is still up there. <clears throat> and of course on Twitter, I am not actively podcasting at the moment. I retired the observe tech podcast back in June. After 317 episodes, I am in development of another podcast uh, in the just figuring out the kind of the the lay of the land for that and my plan for that. And, but I'm really close to being able to do my first kind of beta test cool. of, of the format. Well, when so, will it come? Can you talk about it? When will it come out? How would people uh, subscribe well, to it? I'm not 100 percent sure it'll okay. be available okay. through all the typical channels. So WindowsObserver.com will be the home for it, just like it was for Observe Tech. Um, and it's going to be a podcast that I'm still going to talk tech. I'm still going to talk space stuff because that's still very exciting things to me. Um, but I'm, I'm the, the new podcast is going to be called faith tech and space. So I'm going to talk a little bit more <clears throat> about faith and its impact on technology and vice versa, right? How technology impacts faith. Um, because I'm, I myself am going through, uh, formation, uh, and studies right now for my own personal faith tra- journey. So it'll be a little bit of that. It'll be talking tech and faith, tech and space. And I, you know me, I, I live on the yeah. Florida coast. I get to watch rockets go up in the air all the time. So I'm still going to talk about tech. I'm still a Microsoft guy. I still do my day job writing about enterprise technology. And uh, this will just give me an opportunity to kind of expand that out a little bit. Good. No, that's good. It'll be I'm good to have you. the first of the year will okay. be when I finally – step up into it yeah but. good to have another podcast uh, from you to listen to i miss it i miss it uh, i miss your old podcast i, I, I think you've weird. heard from i you. miss it too i've heard from others i was at ignite last week and i got microsoft people walking up to me saying rich when are you going to do another podcast what's going on so it was kind of cool to get that in fact I, I as i shared with you in the pre-show um 
I had enough people coming forward right after I I decided that I was closing out Observe Tech that I almost resurrected it and brought it back. And I was like, and I got closer to doing it, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not there anymore. And so there are times mm -hmm. to move on, and and that's what I've done there. But more is coming, no doubt. Appreciate it. No, I uh, um, appreciate all the work that you do. Thanks for keeping us up to date with all the stuff that you're doing. We've had you 90 minutes already, and I know you're a busy guy, so we're going to cut you loose. So thanks for coming out, Peace out. Uh, Rich. I appreciate it. Have a Good great evening. And, uh, well, hey, let us know when that podcast – I'm sure you will. Oh, let us absolutely. know when the podcast goes live, and we'll make sure we uh, we talk a bunch about it. We'll, do. we'll have you back on in the spring. Thanks for coming Sounds on, Sounds like Rich. a winner. Ciao, you guys. bet. Take care, man. Appreciate it couple reminders uh, as we're on the way out of here. Uh, one, we want to thank our Patreon subscribers for all that they do uh, here and, and appreciate their work. Um, and thanks. I guess I can just say it that way. You can support the show. <laughs> the average guy. Just say thanks, Jim. Just say yeah. thanks. Yeah. Just say thanks. The average guy. TV slash Patreon gets you done as well. I want to thank um, Christian and for his sponsorship and what he does with Maple Grove partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know, and you trust. Plan start is 10 bucks a month. Um, by, by the way, I mistakenly, I didn't do this on purpose, but if you're a regular Home Gadget Geeks listener, you got episode 58 in the stream because it had been so long since I released an episode of Cyber Frontiers. I clicked all the home, the, uh, all the home Gadget Geek boxes. And so it, by mistake, it came down. <laughs> nobody believes me, but it was, it was true. It just, it came down the channel. So somebody pinged me on Twitter and was like, uh, hey, uh, thanks for... You know, thanks, thanks for that. I was like, ah, so I fixed it. But uh, many of you got a chance to listen to it and catch up with Christian. We thank you for his sponsorship of the program uh, as well. We uh, want to thank those who just, you know, Mike, it's it, Thanksgiving is coming up here in the United States. No, not next week, but the week after. Dwayne, by the way, Dwayne Robinson on next week. We're going to get like a double dose of Microsoft over the next two weeks because Dwayne was at the events that Rich was at and we're going to get his opinion. You know how Dwayne is. He's going to have a lot of things to say and probably break some NDAs. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's very, that's very a, possible. That's what we have him on for, right? Yeah. No, right on. I love it when Dwayne comes on. He's, he's one of my favorite uh, guys to interview. They're all my favorites, just to be honest. But uh, so Dwayne's coming on and then Thanksgiving week, uh, Sammy and I will record live on Friday night. So no Thursday night podcast. That's Thanksgiving. Be with your families. Do those kinds of things. Mike, what are your Thanksgiving plans? What do you guys do for Thanksgiving? Uh, we split it. That's the hard part is we're here for part of it. Um, we have my family who lives in Omaha, and then we've got the farm. So we usually at some point we're either here and then we're at the farm, and we'll do uh, some sort of Thanksgiving at each, which nice. is great because that means I get two awesome fattening Thanksgiving meals. Uh, usually it's the weekend after the close of deer season. So if we got a deer, if we get a deer the last weekend of uh, opening season, that means we hung it and it's waiting for us to take to processing the weekend of Thanksgiving. So sometimes that means we take a deer in. Uh, now, I don't know what that is that you're showing on the screen. So this is our Thanksgiving. Not really. This is... <laughs> But it, they're they're saying huh. uh, just just to that change things up. That made me really up. get out of, out of the mood for Thanksgiving, Jim. <laughs> just you have to watch you, the video. You just, on this yeah, one. you have to describe this one for the for the audio listeners. Just, so it's oh. a turkey. You know how you do a turducken, right? It's a tur it's a turkey, and you jam a duck inside of it, and then sure, sure. I think there's other things you can like a chicken inside the duck, and then a squirrel inside the chicken, something like that. This is a this is what's called a turkraken, which it's is the most disgusting looking thing you've ever seen. It's got the tentacles for the what is that? What are we octopus coming out yeah. the back of the turkey? So why not? Why not do uh, that? That's why not. Yeah, there's no. a lot of comments I have here, but I'm Don't. gonna reserve all of them. Yeah, <laughs> they that came to me <laughs> while we were doing the show tonight, all right. and I just thought that came from I think. What are your plans? Yeah, I know you always do the best bacon wrapped turkey. You oh yeah, you know you released the you you gave me I think you gave everyone, but I felt special. You gave me the recipe last year. <sighs> Yeah. Which I've been thinking about trying this year if I get time. Uh, super great. I just picked up the turkey. I just picked up two pounds of bacon. It really isn't hard. You make a little envelope with tin foil, and you right. don't even have to do that, but it kind of contains the very delicious Italian dressing that you put in on top of this thing. So we, we now, last year, we weaved the bacon. So you make a bacon weave and mm -hmm. put that on top and then pour salad dressing on top of that. That makes like a nice oil base. And so while we don't fry it, we smoke it that way, kind of slow smoke it. And that thing just stays moist the whole time. And it's just super delicious. So 
looking forward to uh, kind of Thanksgiving that way. The kids were back here at the house, so kids will be coming over this year. Hopefully, we get some good weather. And then I say all that to say, I just want to say as we get closer to Thanksgiving, thank you, the listener, who every week or whatever, whatever your schedule is, you, you listen in your car or while you're mowing the lawn or while you're whatever, walking the dog, whatever you're doing. Um, Mike, there's been some times it, work's been busy enough this last eight weeks. I've been like, you know, we're coming up on nine years. I say this about once a year. I think it's this time every year too. Like, you know, do we want to start looking at the schedule? I'm like, do I want to kind of, it's a time to bring it in at, at two fifty or at four fifty for a landing, you know, or four twenty three. I think today, HGG four two three. If you want to get the show notes on this one. Um, you know, but I appreciate, and then I, I come out here and I got awesome guys like Rich or think about any of the guests that join us. It's just, it's just awesome. Right. Well, and I'm the same way, right? Like I'm at this point in my life where I've got two young boys, they're three and two and nighttime is craziness. And I always text Jim, like, or I'm, we Facebook message. I messaged him last night. Like, it'll be seven forty-five, man. The boys are like throwing a fit right now. It's not, they're not going down easy. Something like that. And, uh, but it, it literally is the community here that's like, I get so excited every Thursday, um, to, to come back on. So you guys really do bring us back and you keep us here and, and, uh, we love you for it. So yeah. thanks for listening. And, and even, even all of you, cause you know, we get so used to the names in the chat every Thursday, the guys who are here live, but we know there are thousands of you who are listening on audio. So, so thank you who are always consistently there with audio. I'm the same way with podcasts I listen to. I can't listen to them live. I'm just an audio listener who never writes in. Uh, so I know you guys are out there too. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone. No, right on. We appreciate it as well. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern out here for the average guy, TV slash live. If I can say that I'm two beers in. So it's, <laughs> it's a miracle. I can even talk. We'll be back. I mentioned uh, Dwayne is here. Um, Dwayne, uh, D- Dwayne Robinson is back next week. Sammy, the week after that. Uh, I will be in London the week after that. Still an opportunity. If you're in the London area and you want to meet up with me on December 1st, be a great opportunity on that Sunday to get with you. Erin Lawrence is back to talk about. Uh, she's got some good gadget gifts coming up. Joel from Live Door is coming. That, that's going to be, I'm really looking forward to that interview uh, coming up. And then it's Christmas. So I think I'm going to take Christmas off, take that Christmas weekend off. And then during the show, just a few minutes ago, I pinged. I was thinking, you know, I haven't heard from Paul Breer in a while. So I pinged him just a minute ago. Hey, Paul, time for you to be on the show? Question mark. Within a minute. Love to be. <laughs> so it's funny, right? I mean, just just how connected uh, we all are. And um, so he's he's all ready to go. And uh, we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get Jay back as well. we got a lot of great guests coming up in 2020. And Mike, 2020 is a weird year. It has so five Saturdays in uh, February because we have a leap year. You never get that kind of because it's only 28 days. Five, you never, I mean, five. Four. Sa- no, no, five Saturdays in February because we have 20. It's a leap year, so we have 29. Whoa. Okay. Next year, Christmas, New Year's, Fridays. So you have three day weekends, right? I love that. I saw that in a meme, and I was like, "That makes me so excited." Yeah, no, um, pretty great, uh, pretty great. And there's one other, there's one other thing on that. I think this December, I think there's five three day Saturdays in December, something like that. So we got some weird dates coming up. What's not weird? We're live here every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at TheAverageGuy.tv Live. If you join us live, thanks. Stay around. I got a little short little crypto update that probably won't make it onto Patreon. But with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.